Welcome. Hello, thank you for coming. Um, this is a birds of a feather session, my first one of this kind, about um, quality, quality matrix in Debian. And my question is whether there should be a minimal um, quality requirement for software so that this software should be worth to be included in Debian. And I have um, collected some thoughts he here in a Gobi document. There is already somebody else editing. Please don't delete all my points because then I have, I'm naked here, nothing to tell you. Um, and I would be happy if um, I will um, introduce the topic um, with my points and afterwards we can complete the document, um, have a discussion about it, so that afterwards um, this document will also be a documentation of our discussion about this topic. So let me start. The um, initial idea for doing this was uh, I um, packaged Hadoop, the Apache Hadoop project for Debian. It's a very um, popular solution now for big data. Um, it's hyped as some of the most important software from 2011, um, won some prizes. And um, I had, um, together with Hadoop, there is another um, package, Zookeeper, also from this family, and I had some problems with um, Zookeeper, and so I got involved with Upstream and provided patches to fix my problems. And by getting involved with Upstream, I learned um, first the um, code quality of Zookeeper, their internal code quality, my opinion about code quality, and how Upstream thinks about code quality. Their um, idea was mainly, if it works, don't touch it anymore. And if you want to provide patches, you provide them only to fix bugs or to introduce new features. And new bugs by that. Um, and my idea was, you need constant refactoring to keep your software um, clean. I had um, a bunch of patches in their bug tracker, which um, nobody was interested in uh, because there was no feature, there was no bug fix, it was just cleaning up the code. And in the end, I thought, from my personal judgment, this software does not belong in Debian. And now there are a couple of persons who are angry about me because it was in Debian and I kicked it out again and this didn't m make a good impression about the software. So now I'm here to discuss this issue. Um, or something else, um, one of the num numerous intent to package reports on Debian Devil Hi, I have a nice PHP content management system and I would like to package it for Debian. Um, yeah, how to tell this guy without being too impolite that the interest in this might be low. Um, and I don't want that this kind of discussions are only um, personal um, and subjective. I would like to make them more um, objective with numbers. So, first question, of course, is why, why shouldn't we care at all which software um, comes into Debian? As long as it's free and Lintian doesn't have anything to complain, why should we um, ask, ask questions? And uh, some, some people say, well, if we care about our users, then uh, we should package software so that users can use them. And if we don't p provide uh, software for our users, that means we don't care about them. Is this right? 
And I looked up in the social contract and found at least two passages um, that relates to quality. We will make the best system we can so that free software will be widely distributed and used. So the best system, does it only um, talks about our packaging or also about the upstream code quality? Or we will provide an integrated system of high quality materials. That means we package only stuff that's of high quality. But the Debian policy um, doesn't have any section about um, pack upstream quality or code quality. What is quality? Um, yeah, this was about caring about users can also mean uh, we don't expose bad software to them. So if we package everything on earth, it makes it only hard for users to pick a good solution for them. So Debian is important. When, when I um, um, meet a new software project and I ask myself, should I use it or not? My first question is, is it packaged, packaged for Debian? So is there any Debian developer who thought this software is of any good? And if we package everything, then this quality of Debian is lost. It so why is um, the um, developers of this upstream project um, said my patches are only aesthetic um, patches. They, uh, it's only about style, it's only about taste. And um, my idea about this kind of patches to clean up codes is you reduce bugs, even bugs that you haven't encountered yet, um, that might happen once. Um, you will provide a ground so that you can um, in the future fix bugs faster because you understand the code better, you can maintain it better, or you can um, Clean code means you have fewer security holes, because if you understand the code, um, there won't be so many places where you have overseen something. Um, clean code may lead to fewer crashes or no crashes, no data loss, um, adaptability for other environments. So for example, the Zookeeper project, I, I needed to patch it so that it could compile on ARM, because there was some assembler issue, I have no idea about it. Um, but if it's clean, then it should be easy to run on different architectures for different use cases. And um, clean code may uh, mean that this software will be around for a longer time. There will, in two, three years, there will still be people who have fun to work on this code and uh, you don't need to change um, your solution because um, nobody is interested anymore in it. And um, if we also say that developers are users, um, then we should also care about those poor developers who has, have to use the software and have to understand the code. Um, yeah, that is, was my motivation to make it less personal, more objective. Keep crap outside of Debian. Um, it's advertisement to be in Debian. Debian policy says nothing about upstream code quality. Okay, I had everything of this. Um, so. Should we make a first round of questions? Are there comments so far before I continue? Well, uh, one thing I like with Debian is the huge amount of options you have when you look for some, uh, software. So um, I'm always a little bit concerned.
One thing that. Could we have another mic? Hello. There should be two mics in this room. One more try. Hey. Okay. So one thing I like in Debian is the huge diversity of software we have, and um, I think <coughs> uh, if there's no other software available in the free software market, oh, uniqueness. I uh, had the same idea. So uniqueness of a software should be one quali kind of quality metric. Okay. Solved. <laughs> yeah, well, a little bit, but um, there are also um, some types of software where dozens of it in Debian, and they, I still see there some uniqueness in there in some times, even if maybe others don't see it. Mm -hmm. So like web browsers, I package myself three web browsers in the meanwhile, and I see completely different use cases for them. So. Every, uh, each of them has their own uniqueness, so that's, yeah. that's maybe uh, something where also the, the yeah, let's say, demand for specific software is, should be part of that. I uh, think that we cannot come up with um, hard numbers um, uh, and then set a limit, okay, f under this number we won't include it in Debian. Um, but what we could work on is at least a framework to reason ab about should the software be part of Debian or not. And um, some um, parts of this framework could be hard numbers and uh, some parts um, could be um, arguments like, well, this um, has the same purpose of another package, but it's a text-only um, package. So um, this is a type of uniqueness, and therefore we should um, include it, and uh, we can uh, write it down so that there don't need to be any further discussion about it. And then we now, okay, this is uh, from an argument from the uniqueness category. One way around that would be to use the deb tags a lot more effectively yeah. um, because that, if you can't show in the deb tags system that package A has no different tags to package B, then really are you arguing about nothing at all? So you've got two packages, if you can't discriminate them within the deb tags that we've currently got or within um, temp tags you can justify adding then that should be a useful indicator that these packages are too, too close and too similar. Yeah, or it may point off, out some missing text. <clears throat> we, al we also need to, for example, put in, in also the, the, the depth tags, but also integrated something with UDD, so we can find, for instance, in a, in a, in a, in a first look, if the two packages have similar characteristics, and which one has a lot of bugs, or which one is low maintenance package. So we can decide which one to remove, not just to the enter in the Debian, uh, mostly to remove packages that are already crappy packages in, the, in the archive. Okay. Um, I um, have, haven't yet seen uh, the um, UDD database because I'm not a Debian developer. I can't say anything about this. Maybe somebody else. I, I would like to stress the, um, the quality of Debian beta because I think that many people look at Debian to understand, uh, as, as you said before, what, is, um, um, what is, uh, can be trusted to be quality software and what is not. So I think that um, this must be an important element in our discussion. Yeah, I very much think the same because 
I got involved in the Apache community and my personal impression was that at least um, the project I have looked into, the Apache community has a totally different approach about quality than uh, Debian and it would be a, a loss for the software world if Debian could get compromised over time in regards to quality. So, continue with the next section. Um, types of quality me metrics. Um, well, there are some quality metrics which are um, um, researched um, from PhDs at university and well known and most people agree that um, less is better or more is better of these metrics and some of them are you should you shouldn't have duplicate code um, you sh should have a higher test coverage um, you should have um, less um, few coupling you have should have few complexity um, and there are some um, established best practices for different um, languages. For example, JSLint for JavaScript. Um, there is the same um, for Java with FindBugs or PMD. Um, so I think um, there, is, there are a couple of um, tools already available which we could just take, run it over the archive, come up with numbers and just see, well, uh, what is the current state of um, code quality in Debian? And we have one point um, from which we could start to argue. When there is a new intent to package, somebody could look up, oh, my uh, package is so low in quality compared with the rest of Debian, maybe I should um, think about think again about packaging it. And this is the time Raphael is not here, sadly, because he started already a project, DACA, Debian Automated Code Analysis, where um, he ha already had the idea, collect these tools, let them run over the archive. But of course, this is an enormous amount of work. And actually, you would need a couple of full-time um, developers to keep such a system running but um, the idea I think is the right direction and would help us a lot. So there are other metrics um, we could um, have a look. How do um, they manage their project? Is there a bug tracker? Is there a mailing list? Do they have a version control system, a public one? Is it distributed maybe um, uh, better? Does, um, do they support, um, have long-term support versions or um, do they uh, just don't care anymore about older versions when a newer one has been released? Um, do they have a proper versioning scheme um, or is it like with many Java libraries, um, they break their up ABI um, compatibility with minor version upgrades? Um, how many developers, um, how major is a project, is it just fresh or has it already proven for one, two or three years that it's stable? Um, what's, do they have documentation, do they have separate documentation for users and for developers? And um, are they used by other projects? Yeah. I will come back to this point. <laughs> yeah, this one is uh, my personal uh, thinking about the Zookeeper episode. What uh, do they think about code quality? But it's hard to measure this one. So, and then once Debian metrics, um, once we gather, gathered um, such metrics, what do we do with it? With it? Um, so first, there will no way, there will be no way ever to introduce a hard limit into Debian. There w this would be revolution. So the only choice is 
to uh, propose um, that people should um, orientate themselves on this matrix and that they should have a look on it and one could work with social pressure but uh, there will never be a deviant policy um, that means you must have that many points on the matrix scala. Um, I, when you know a bit how Google calculates page rank, they have just like 100, 200 different signals, they call it. Signals are how many in-links um, does a page have and what's the page rank of the page linking to this one. Um, is uh, the HTML correct of this page? Um, is this um, a trusted domain or is it um, some island where there are only spammers? So all these uh, metrics come together, they have different uh, weights and together they um, form one page rank um, for um, a website. And the same, could, the same principle could be applied to Debian packages. So we have many metrics, we um, give different weights to these metrics and just um, multiply them with the weights and come up with just some numbers. A category automated um, code matrix, category um, uniqueness, category um, yeah, <sighs> arguments, don't know how to call it. So then, then I had the idea when there is such a PHP content management system, um, First, I thought we should have general um, points um, subtracted if a package is written in PHP or a Ruby, but um, that would be not fair. And then I had the idea, well, we have dependency graphs in Debian, so we could use the dependency graphs, and if a package depends on PHP, it will also inherit a bit of PHP's code quality. And this will automatically subtract many um, points from this package. Trust me, I have seen the, the inside. Yeah, I know. But sorry, what's the question? Well, the, code quality of PHP, the code quality of PHP makes no indication of the code quality of software written in PHP, does it? Um. If, if your package relies on another package and you have written just a tiny library uh, on top of another package, but the other package is just crap. So you should think again, if you want um, to keep this crap in Debian just because there is this tiny library um, which needs it, or I think there is some relation. If you rely on crappy software, then you should be punished. <laughs> now, we could discuss about PHP I, much I, longer, I, I think. Yeah, I, I have an, also an idea regarding PHP. I, I think uh, PHP encourages uh, some kind of code which is uh, not should be called quality code. Uh, yes, yeah. that, that's my take on uh, it. Uh, there, there are many good frameworks and many good codes written in it, but uh, I think there is some encouragement uh, regarding bad behavior in coding. I have to stop myself not to talk about PHP any, lo any longer. <laughs> I've suffered it for five years now and I won't do it again. Um, Yes, we talked about uniqueness, um, position in the dependency tree. So if there is a package which has many dependencies and many other important packages are relying on it, so it gets rewarded for this. So maybe PHP remains in Debian because there are so many packages which needs it, sadly. Um, Popcorn numbers would, of course, be one indicator. Not, doesn't need to be discussed. Um, I will just talk about my points here. Sorry, I, uh, otherwise I can't go that fast. Um, <sighs> 
just measure them, yeah, that, yeah, this would be my dream. If you fill an intent to package, there would be some possibility to upload your software um, in some Debian provided portal and it's, the matrix gets calculated and you attach the results directly to the intent to package. That's the end goal. And um, related to this, I thought um, if we could help upstream projects, because it's hard to set up all this infrastructure, the continuous integration systems, um, the unit testing frameworks, and have them run continuously. Um, so for small projects, um, maybe Debian could help out with this, that. And I thought about how many um, horsepower we need to calculate all this stuff, um, if this is possible on Debian infrastructure. I have no idea um, how many um, servers Debian has and how uh, we could acquire more, um, how more CPU time. So I already mentioned um, the project from Raphael. Um, and um, there is a mailing list set up, there is this website, go there, um, start contributing. I think it's a fantastic idea, we should uh, move it forward. Um, I found in the net another project from some Greek university, I think. Um, they um, already started a project to measure um, the quality of open source software. We could contact them. Yeah, and three other ideas that we could discuss later. Um, introducing, there is another mechanism to um, introduce higher quality. Um, I have read that there are not many um, hard requirements inside Google for um, clean code, but there is one law inside Google that may not be broken, every line of code needs to be reviewed by another engineer. And um, there is no formal review process in Debian. Um, have you ever thought about um, requiring um, reviews um, in, inside Debian so that another Debian developer should have a look over your package? I, I just continue with these two points and then we discuss, okay? Um, peer review, well, I will give a skills exchange session about Garrett, a, a review tool on top of Git, so mark it if you are interested. And I think this whole, whole area is a wonderful area to uh, write your thesis about it, your PhD thesis, your master thesis, if you're in this situation right now. Thank you, and let's start discussing. Well, uh, one more comment to you, you claim that there's no review process in Debian. There is, actually. It's called sponsoring, but it's only yeah. for non-DDs. So, um, and there are also already quite some personal how-tos on how to do such a sponsoring review. So they are all a little bit different, but um, they also have several parts which are very common in every personal. Uh, list for that. So they are in the wiki, wiki there being mm -hmm. somewhere. Have a look there. Yeah, thanks. Um, actually, I think it would be possible to use the mentoring process also for DDs. On, on one hand, there is too little manpower in the mentoring team, sort of. Um, it's already hard for people to find someone to mentor and upload their packages. And there's also sort of review process during the freeze time for the release team and stable updates, but that's fairly limited to these special areas where we really want to do the review during the regular release cycles uh, or release process, um, uploads to Unstable are usually not reviewed and we have the sort of 
testing transition for that, but proper review in that time would also be appreciated. But like Zach said in his talk, there's too little manpower for doing that properly. Mm. It would be an interesting discussion whether um, code review is so much work or if it um, reduces work in the long term, but that's another question. Yeah, so um, there are several things I wanted to say. Uh, first, first is about, uh, you mentioned SETI Atom and Boeing. Uh, I think that uh, that's really a, a side problem and you shouldn't try to address this. If you write tools that can easily be run on uh, a table or on a source package, then it's easy for someone else to just use your tools to run it on the whole archive. I can provide uh, a CPU time for that and some some other people can't. The real key problem is develop the tools to, to do it and to analyze the results. For example, if you show me that you can run it on 5% of the archive, you, you just don't have the resources to run it on 100% of the archive, I can do the 95% remaining. That's not the problem. Okay, that's promising, thanks. Um, so you, you mentioned, um, so it's completely different, you mentioned masters and PhD. So that's uh, what you are talking about is a really active area of research. There are lots of uh, people working on that. So I just added um, two, two other projects working on that, but there are, there are a, lot, a lot more. Um, I think that it would be really great if you could uh, contact those people Tell them that you are interested in applying what they do to Debian and just reuse what they are doing. Because probably they, are already, uh, they already have tools and let's not reinvent the wheel. It's a really complex, uh, it's very complex stuff and probably it's hard to make a contribution uh, to develop something new in that area. Um, and the, sorry, I'm just uh, going through my list. And the last point I wanted to say was about peer review. Uh, I think that it's something that should be tested inside the team uh, because it's difficult to convince uh, the whole project to switch to uh, peer review by 2 DDs before any upload. The easiest way to test that is to find a team that is willing to experiment with the idea and then uh, come back uh, six months later and report on what you learn from it. So the Ruby team is not a candidate for it because uh, we'd have problems finding two DDs to, <laughs> to review, but maybe some other teams with more DDs uh, uh, could, could do that. Mm -hmm. um, first thing I'd like to say is that for some software, then we are kind of a little bit stuck with code quality, like GPG or OpenSSL, if like any of you remember the debacle and stuff. Um, but more concrete level, uh, the, I know that uh, Zach has started to use a tool called, uh, called Coxinel, uh, which is like, uh, knows how to do semantic analysis of C code, which is like, you can actually grab for uh, code patterns. And this is a, a tool that I encourage a lot of people to look into if they're interested in uh, uh, measuring, probably having a metrics of uh, C code quality that could be used like direct for, uh, I don't know, user for after free or this kind of, of stuff. Um, and the, the last thing is, I think we really miss uh, um, a process to actually remove packages from the archive uh, because it's something like not letting uh, bad pa packages in the archive, but I mean, if they, if they start being if they, if they landed the archive and start being used by a lot of people, maybe there'll be volunteers that will improve the code quality. But if that doesn't happen after years, then hey, just, you know, we should remove them. Uh, and it's been like kind of blurry for me. How, what, what is the proper process? Who, who, has the, uh, who can uh, actually propose that a, a package uh, to be removed because the quality is so bad and how we could actually have some kind of vote on that? Or, like if, if many people, uh, uh, if many developers think a package should be removed, having some kind of process would be good, I'd say. Well, there is already some tools that look at Grodet for it that measure the UDDS, UDDS statistics with popcorn and books. 
so you can fa easily find some old maintenance package already on the archive and then see if it's orphan and then you can just request to remove the package to FTP masters. But I don't know how exactly it works. I never made a, a, a removal myself. I see that people is doing it, but I feel sometimes afraid to, to just go ahead and ask for a removal package, even if it's bad. So maybe we need uh, guidelines on that. There are fairly simple ways of making sure that you can actually get the removal bug sorted out first. You've got to work out whether it's actually only affecting testing or whether you want to remove it from unstable as well. And you've got to look at the other reverse dependencies. If it's a package with no reverse dependencies and you've got justification to remove it, then the filing the bug from that is actually very simple and the package will be removed very easily. So it's, it's, it's how, how much uh, trouble it will cause the rest of the archive has to be taken into account when you're thinking about removal. Um, maybe um, before it was proposed uh, to have uh, um, something like mentors for all uh, packages, not only for the ones who have to be sponsored. Um, I, I think that um, this could also be a risk because uh, uh, having packages unstable is actually a way to verifying them because uh, people use them and if someone uses unstable it's supposed to know that is, it may um, encounter the problems or, or some. And, uh, um, and not having, uh, not, not delaying the upload to unstable can both uh, frustrate who is working on that package, and uh, um, um, and it, it's a lack of the testing that comes from having packages in unstable. Uh, I I tend to think that uh, um, um, uh, it could be useful to have uh, um, modify, for example, the patch tracker we have to. Um, so, so that uh, people can approve uh, or, or say um, no, that patch is, isn't good uh, to, to, pa to the patches for, for the various packages. And uh, um, the number of patches that are um, confirmed or not uh, can be a metric uh, used to uh, evaluate the, the package quality. And, uh, and maybe we could also uh, think uh, uh, I, I don't think uh, it is um, a good idea to, automatica to automatically file uh, RC bugs to packages with a low uh, quality index uh, um, because um, I, I don't think it's sustainable. But maybe we, uh, we could modify a little the process, process of migrating to testing so that uh, um, um, a, a, a package uh, in unstable, we ha we, which has a um, low quality index, uh, can be, um, uh, can, isn't automatically migrated to testing, but uh, um, is done, for example, if the, um, uh, um, if the maintainer requests it uh, uh, with some good uh, reason for, uh, for this request uh, or something similar. So not automatic, but not uh, uh, neither um, uh, blocked. Uh, so, but uh, um, you have to explicitly want it and have good reason for it. Yeah, are there any other questions? Otherwise, um, well, it would be interesting to know um, the uh, feedback, kind of feedback from uh, the audience, um, if um, this is really a necessity for Debian, um, or if um, you think it's um, not that necessary, we can mo move forward without it, or if this uh, should be a high priority project for Debian to um, introduce such quality metrics, or if you just think, well, fine, if somebody does it, um, fine, but I don't think that's that important um, to get uh, Debian moving forward. Well, um, I just wanted to point out that there is a parallel to 
an idea that we've been toying around, I don't know, like five or six years ago. We called them upload certificates back then. And the idea was basically that not just for ITPs, but also for every single upload, um, the changes file would have to have a certain number of certificates attached to it before the archive would accept it. And um, such, you know, for the OpenSSL case, for instance, one would say that OpenSSL is such an important piece of software that it needs to be reviewed by two or three um, people, and it needs to have, you know, passed Lintian checks, and it needs to have the PO parts checks passed, and so on. And every single one of those things constitutes a certificate that you attach to the changes file, and unless it, the changes file has a certain minimum requirement, um, the upload will just be rejected automatically. And I think that this would fit in um, well with that scheme, and it would also solve some other problems. And to answer your question, whether this is necessary or not, um, I, think it, I think it would be good to have this sort of peer review quality flow um, at the stage of uploads. And it would include the ITPs as well as regular changes, because there's not really that much of a difference. I mean, OK, it, ITP is a new software in Debian, and you're trying to prevent crappy software from entering our archive and having package inflation as well. But at the same time, we could solve this. At the same time that we solved this problem, we could also solve the problem of, of making changes, you know, potentially late at night under the influence of beer or something like that that <laughs> people might um, not appreciate. OK, then I think I shouldn't hold anybody back from lunch. Thank you for your contributions, your ideas, your feedback.